now we are ready for the VI which means the voltage current relationship or basically the VI equations for NMOS transistor what that means is I wanted to know by changing the voltages what happens to the currents that's what I'm after let's start with the basic structure of the transistor here is the 2D layout and as you can see the source is grounded and the gate is connected to a variable voltage and the drain is connected to a variable voltage we can replace this 2D structure with the simple the electric symbol structure so basically what we have is the transistor and the gate is connected to VG and the drain is connected to VD and the source is grounded so this is the basic structure that we discussed before and in order for us to find the voltage current relationship the first thing we have to do is look at the creation of the channel when can we create a channel from our previous discussion we have stated that if VGS is less than VTH is less than the threshold voltage the transistor is off basically it's in the sub threshold region and for now we go on to say that the transistor is off if it is in the sub threshold voltage we assume there is no current through the transistor but as we stated earlier when it comes to practice when you design the circuit for physical manufacturing on the wafer this sub threshold voltage will cause leakage current so you have to count for it but for now we assume that this is very important remark for now we assume that if VGS is less than the threshold voltage the transistor is off that basically means the drain and the source are separated because there isn't a continuous path for the current to flow from the drain to the source if VGS which means the voltage from the gate to the source if VGS the voltage from the gate to the source is bigger than the threshold voltage then a channel is created and if VDS is greater than zero the current will flow from the drain to the source we're gonna call it ID well also remember that the channel is stronger the channel is stronger for higher VGS so the more VGS we apply the stronger the channel that means the more current that will conduct through the transistor this is basic sense right because the more VGS you have the stronger the concentration of the electrons that means for the same VDS you get large current from the drain to the source in fact that this channel will behave as a resistor under certain conditions we're gonna talk about it shortly and that is one of the attractive features of the transistor is you can use it as a variable resistor we're gonna also talk about it shortly but what you do is by controlling VDS you control the concentration of the charges underneath the gate within the channel or the strength of that channel you see and that is very powerful flexibility that you have you can add it to your design we're going to introduce a concept called the effective voltage it is also called the overdrive voltage the overdrive voltage or basically the effective voltage is what we call VGS minus the threshold voltage VGS minus VTH and this is very important concept let me go over it shortly what that means is if VGS equals to the threshold voltage I just created the channel the channel is very weak but I just created it if I increase VGS more than the threshold voltage then a stronger channel is created then the channel becomes stronger so VGS minus V threshold is the effective voltage or the overdrive voltage that causes the transistor to conduct see and that is very important by increasing VGS over the threshold voltage that means VGS minus VTH that indicates how strong your channel is so make sure 
you get this concept the effective voltage or the overdrive voltage now what we are going to do is we are going to apply small VDS so we created the channel we applied VGS that is higher than the threshold voltage but we would like to apply small VDS which means the voltage from the drain to the source is positive value so what happens if we apply small VDS to the transistor what happens is the channel becomes skewed with a gradient as we are showing you in the animation here so why this gradient happens for a very basic reason the drain supplies positive charges which is the drain current from the drain to the source so the positive charges of the drain current get depleted so you start to see that there is a gradient because these positive charges coming from the drain are depleted by the channel and that's why you start to have a gradient in the concentration of the negative charges as you approach the drain the concentration of the negative charges is smaller also make sure that the gates current is zero because of the oxide layer remember that at the gate we have a silicon dioxide which is an insulator and this insulator will not allow the positive charges of the gate to penetrate through to the transistor and over here we will assume that there is no tunneling right and tunneling means that the thickness of the oxide is so small that some of the charges will jump through that oxide layer that insulator into the transistor they become dominating in digital circuits in analog circuits they still use a thicker uh, silicon dioxide so it's not as dominating yet but as technology advances we might have to count for it if there is a tunneling from the gate then you model the silicon dioxide by some sort of a resistor and it becomes similar to the concept of the BJT at least in this course we will assume that the gate current is zero there is no tunneling so what we did we said that if you apply VDS a current will flow from the drain to the source and the concentration of the charge through the channel will have a gradient such that more negative charges are used or consumed at the gate side and the reason is VGS is still strong it's above the threshold voltage and then the positive voltage of the gate continue to attract these negative charges from the source that's why you have a gradient in the concentration of the negative charges within that channel